You were offering a dick pic? No, I was in a TV show. Uh huh. I was acting. Oh, okay! <laughs> It's me, Miss Cracker. Hi, my name is Niall DeMarco. I'm an actor, a producer, and an advocate. I'm here at them to get into drag for my very first time with Ms. Cracker. He's an incredible person, but that doesn't mean we can't change him today, which is what we're gonna do. It's time for a transformation! This being my first time, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. Let's do it. Who is this? Hello. Hey. So, it's so great to meet you. I'm thrilled to be here. Okay, how do I say this? Like, this? Right, so. nice to meet you. Okay, good. <laughs> I worked on it hard. Good job. <laughs> All right, now you get to learn uh, some of my language as well, the language of makeup. Have you ever been in drag before? This is actually my first time in drag. Okay. So, I mean, I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm a little bit nervous, but honestly, I think you'll do me well. Okay, your organization is set up to provide access to sign language education for kids around the world. Can you talk about that a little bit? So, my foundation, called the Nile DeMarco Foundation, was originally established um, partially because my entire family is deaf, right? So a little background, um, being the fourth generation in yeah. my family, I have two deaf brothers, deaf parents, grandparents, even my great grandparents, right? So I was incredibly fortunate that I had you know, access to language from the day I was born. Plus I went to a deaf school growing up. And later on I realized that only 2% of children worldwide actually have access to education in a formal sign language. So I consider myself incredibly fortunate. And with this platform that I'm given, I feel like I have an immense opportunity to really spread awareness about the issue. What I like about you is that um, you, don't, you don't think of yourself as different, using that word, because you grew up in a family that is just, they, they spoke sign, and you think of yourself as who you are, not as different, which is, I think, really beautiful. I'm pleased to introduce the Nile DeMarco Foundation. So how long have you been doing Drag Miss Cracker? About 34 hours. Straight. <laughs> I've been doing drag for 10 years. Wow. I understand that someone asked you, don't you wish that you could hear? I understand where that's coming from, but you said no. Why, why is that? Well, really the fastest answer is that I was born in an entirely deaf family, so it's really all I know. So I don't really have an understanding of sound. I don't really understand silence either. Growing up, I had an entirely deaf family, and so I always felt that was something that I should cherish and embody, and I wouldn't replace that for a hearing family in the world. You know, my perspective and my life experiences, you know, my understanding of things is completely different from a lot of hearing people. And that's something that I, I really love. I love my outlook on life because of that. You know, a lot of people don't realize that deaf people have a culture, a really, really beautiful culture, and I can't imagine giving that up for anything. You know, deaf, uh, deaf people all over feel the same way. I grew up Jewish in a community that was mostly, if not all, Christian. Um, and it was very hard for me to understand how to be different and happy and uh, I right. wished that I was raised like everyone else around me, Christian. And then I realized how much I would lose um, if I lost my Jewishness. And so I decided to stop thinking about what could have been and just see what was great about being myself. Absolutely. You've got to, I mean, you only live once, right? Make it fun. I found with makeup you can live twice. There's an entertainer, Russell Harvard, who is on Broadway now, and he's playing a role that is not necessarily a deaf role, but he is signing. And what does that feel like for you as far as representation? Well, it's great. I'm excited. 
You know, I don't think that deaf people should just be limited to deaf roles. I myself, as an actor, have done a lot of auditions that were for hearing roles as well. You know, and I think people always look at that and think, well, how am I gonna have to change a role for a deaf person? But really, that's kind of the whole point, right? I'm here to challenge you and challenge the story and show you that a character can be deaf, right? But I also think that it really sheds light on casting directors and their ability to cast a deaf person for a hearing role, you know? Which hopefully will start a new trend for us. And Russell Harvard is incredibly talented. Out of all the you know disability writers and and, and cast, 95% of hearing character of um, disabled characters are actually being played by able-bodied people, right? They're essentially stealing our roles. It's like they can't get their own able-bodied roles. So you know it's a challenge in, in many ways. It's that way for queer people for people of them in the trans community. You know, people should be able to represent their community. It's the same idea, 100%. By the way, I'm doing a great job. Uh, you have, <laughs> <laughs> you have auditioned a lot. Uh, and I wonder if you have experienced any discrimination while you are auditioning. A lot of times I have, but it's always, <laughs> you know, offered as a solution, right? So like when I go in for an audition, a lot of times I'll say, listen, we can't hire an interpreter because we don't have the budget for it, sorry. And I tell them, I'm like, that's part of the American with Disabilities Act, right? And having to fight against that and fight against budgets for an interpreter, is, it's really tough, right? So a lot of times I'll send in a self tape, right? And you know, I'll tell them, I'd love to meet you, you know, face to face for coffee. And that typically works for them fine. You know, it's a solution, but it's a little bit different. You know, a big part of my life as a deaf person is always having to provide hearing people solutions to work with me, and I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a naturally difficult uh, person to, to deal with, and I always have to provide people solutions for me as well, so I know exactly the same. In a TV show, while you were acting, you, you offered someone a dick pic, and it went viral. Um, can you tell us some useful phrases? They don't have to be sexual but some nice modern phrases in sign language. Maybe, maybe like Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill. Slide into my DMs. How about uh, the most important dating phrase? I forgot my wallet. I forgot my wallet. <laughs> Ms. Cracker, what are you doing tonight? Oh my goodness. <laughs> We're on camera. <laughs> Okay, now that it's 2020, what is your biggest New Year's resolution? I say I really want to be doing a lot more executive producing on shows, looking at selling some more shows, um, definitely get a, getting ahead of my acting. You know, I've got a lot of ideas. Hopefully this year we'll, we'll see my work carry me through 2020. What about you? What's, yours? What's your New Year's resolution? Just one book. If I can read one book. Listen, we did it. <laughs> Okay, we, um, it's time to choose the clothes. Okay, let's go to the rack and have a look. Bar. <laughs> you look so happy already. Can't wait. <laughs> Excited to see what you have in store for me. Yeah, so usually we have a lot of clothes to choose from. I've got things here that like Beyonce's worn. I've got things that like, but like I'll give you slinky Beyonce's crystal. Worn. This is my top favorite is this one. But today, I have something very specific in mind, so there's only one thing on the rack. You could choose from these accessories. That's what you get today. But uh, this is what I want to do. I want to get you in some pads so that you look like a big, curvy woman, um, which means it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Get out of your clothes. <laughs> I'll help. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. One. Okay, you could do the next one. <laughs> now, what kind of underwear are you wearing? You know what? It's better if we just... Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm gonna get your body. Here's your little body. All right, so you want me to put it all on in here? Or put just it all on in there. And uh, I'll be waiting right here. 
All right. <laughs> I won't be that long, baby. <laughs> While he's in there, I'm gonna get changed because I want to surprise him with a little something. All right, are you ready in there? Oh, there she is, look at you. You have your little belt on and everything. Let me feel these pads. Okay, perfect. Are you ready for the rest of your look for the final touch? I'm ready. How ready? do you- Look at you. I'm thinking, oh, this? <laughs> this old thing? Yeah, I thought I would do a quick little outfit change. Now, you said you've watched- For our date tonight, of course. Date. Yeah, <laughs> because I know you like a date in the Russian tea room. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put on the finishing touches. I'm going to show you your look, and then I think it's gonna all make sense. <laughs> wow. I don't look like myself at all, but I look fab. Oh, I am definitely killing it, feeling this. Oh my God, my ass looks better. <laughs> oh my God, this is unbelievable. How do you feel? We look like fab sisters. All right, and here she is. My name is Cracker, and this is my drag daughter, Trixie Matu. <laughs> Trademark. I don't know if you know who we are, but I decided to make us into Trixie Mattel and Katya blah 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 blah. Katya and Trixie. <laughs> I see it. I see it. I am literally Trixie Mattel. So, now that we're sisters, let's go host our hit YouTube series. Shablam! <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs>